Free-for-all. Anarchy. One it's a free-for-all. It's already an straight out <laughs> anarchy. I'd like to bring to order the August 27th meeting of the Tiverton Town Council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Mallow. Council Perry. Present. Council Shavit. Present. Council Ryan. Present. Council Hilton. Present. Council DeMadiris. Present. Council Edwards. Present. Council LeBeau. Yep. All present. Consent agenda. Am I You're on. Approval of regular session council meeting min minutes August 14, 2018. Council DeMadiris and Edwards abstain after no executive session held that evening. Approval of Executive Session Meeting Minutes, July 23rd, 2018. Approval of Executive Session Meeting Minutes, July 9th, 2018. Approval of Special Town Council Meeting Minutes, August 6th, 2018. Councilor Bo abstains, absent. Approval of July 23rd, 2018. Council Meeting Minutes as amended. Receipt of minutes from the following boards and commissions, the Planning Board and the Historical Preservation <coughs> Advisory Board, two apiece. Correspondence and received and filed. Susan Gill regarding letter thanking individuals for support during the AO tenure. Approval of tax assessor abatements and Treasurer Denise Sherratt, July budget and revenue report. Would anyone like to pull anything from the consent agenda? Madam President. Council Edwards. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion's been made. Yes. I just want to point out that um, number five includes, I believe, some requests to approve transfers that might require action. All right, so. It does? I am going to make a motion. Yeah, it does. But as the consent, but if we consent to this consent agenda, then we will approve the transfers. Right. Everyone understands that, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. Yep. As long as everyone understands that. So I have a motion in the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments and resignations, board of canvases, resignation of Jean Begg as alternate. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept her resignation with regret and thank her for all her service. So, so second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unfinished business. <laughs> Police Chief Jones. Madam President, is there any uh, open forum? I don't believe so. Is there? No. No. Okay. From here, I didn't look at, but I might be able to look at either. Yes, there is. Oh, there is. Okay. Uh oh. Must have happened since I sat down. Prison law. Open forum. William McLaughlin, Sanctuary Town. Mr. McLaughlin, we are going to discuss this on the agenda. Do you want to wait until it comes up, and then I'll let you speak? Okay. Is that all right with everyone? Okay. Thank you. Unfinished business. Police Chief Jones request approval of police for reserve office cop, ROC, and letter of agreement for reserve officers. Uh, A, Police Chief Jones request approval of appointment of Scott Ramsey as reserve officer. Welcome. Good evening. So uh, last council meeting, I had also spoken with the administrator about the research and implementation of a reserve officer corps, also a community service officer program. So I know the administrator, I had supplied the administrator with the model contract and also the model policy of the police department, which I believe you have in front of you now. So I think just from a procedural perspective, what I'd like to do is fully implement the ROC or the Reserve Officer Corps program and also recommend to you that we appoint uh, Mr. Ramsey as its first introductee. Now this is for the casino. 
Correct. But the reserve officers. Well, for other things also. <coughs> any right. detail. That's correct. Okay. The difference between the reserve officer core and the obviously the community service officers is the ability for the reserve officer to have law enforcement powers under general law to carry a firearm and essentially be indistinguishable from the active duty police officers. Well, they wear our uniform. They will wear our uniform, but there'll be different um, trappings to designate so them as a reserve. Are of Correct. Any questions from the council? Madam President. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm just going to make a motion. But. So, Trish, would you like to speak first? I just wanted to ask if the solicitor had reviewed the proposed contract for this. I have. We had it also reviewed by the Rhode Island Interlocal Risk Management Trust. Of course, you know, you always have to worry about the liability, but we do have coverage for this. My only suggestion, uh, and this is after a consultation with the administrator, instead of reserve officer court, could this be called retired officer court? Of course. Are they retired though? All of these? <laughs> yes. From our police station. Um, and also, from I know we had spoken about as long as they're retired law enforcement in Rhode Island, they'd be covered. So, if we had a Tiverton resident who was a retired Portsmouth police officer, they could be considered. Now, are these uh, are they up to skills with fire, firearms? Correct. And everything so, else what you guys part need? Part of the policy would demand that they remain proficient, there's no separation of service that they go through all the same criteria and qualifications that your full-time officers go through. And if there were any lapses, if they didn't, uh, if they failed the training or they didn't show up for the training, then that would be reason for dismissal. Okay. Well, just one quick, I forgot. How many um, reserve officers are you, look, um, retired officers are you looking for? I wouldn't want any more than half a dozen. Okay. No, yeah. All right, and that would be plenty. Even that, that would be is a, that would be plenty. That's actually an extreme number. Okay. But to have three or four, yep. with the understanding that if any Tiverton officers retired in the next in, in years to come, yep. that they would have preference to preference. be able to do that. Correct. Okay. Thanks, Councilor Edwards. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the policy for Reserve Officer Corps, which we're now calling Retired Officer Corps, uh, and letter of agreement for Reserve Officers. Second. Any further discussion? Motion to be made and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Madam President. Go ahead. I'd also like to make a motion to approve the appointment of Scott Ramsey as a reserve officer. Second. second. Motion to be made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much. A very good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Treasurer, approval of the final disposition of LED retrofit financing. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, I'm, I'm just skipping over things. DBW Director Rogers, 2008 used truck warranty. Good evening. Are you ready? At the uh, August 14th, it was approved to purchase the 2008. Uh, snow fighter with the request that we look into warranties the only available warranty is the 30-day warranty on major components uh, for the engine the tranny and the rear axle issued by Cambridge Auto Wholesale we also checked with Madigan to see if they would have a, any kind of extended warranty with the vehicle came from and they said no so the only available warranty is the 30-day issued by Cambridge Auto Wholesale and they, they are issuing that more or less because we just got a couple of vehicles and we're a town. They're not required on a, in Massachusetts, there's a 30-day guaranteed warranty for automobiles, but not uh, trucks. Any questions from the council? Madam President? Yes. So is that at no cost to us? That's a freebie? Yeah, right. yeah it's included in the cost of the vehicle. Okay. They did that for goodwill. Okay. Now is our mechanic looked over this truck? They have, and they will go over it again uh, once it's delivered on Wednesday. They are, they'll go through it okay. more thoroughly, but they've gone through it. And found no problems that they're, no. they're worried about. Correct. No problems yet. We don't expect any problems. 
But if they find something significant on Wednesday, then what happens? Oh, no, and we have 30 days. So 30 if we days. find something significant, they will repair it. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. I'd like to entertain a motion. Do we need a motion on this? I think it's just an update. Do you want us to approve to buy the truck with this warranty? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Madam President? Yes. Uh, make a motion to uh, approve the purchase of the 2008 uh, Snowfighter with this conditional warranty. Second. Any further questions? I, I thought we did that already. I mean, we already bought the I truck. Thought we did too. Yeah. Well, I know, but I think we, we did it again. Well, you we get well, I went to see You get two now. I was I was say, what I understood, just, we set them forward to make truck, sure you we have the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the motion should be that we approve the warranty and. and we, we, and we approve the purchase of the truck with the warranty, with yes. The warranty. I think that's what it should be. Second. Okay, so much has been made in second. Um, all those in favor? You did. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now, Denise Charette. Denise Charette, Treasurer, approval of final disposition of LED retrofit financing and street light conversion expenses. Denise? Oh, there she is. Yeah, she's Hiding in the back. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Okay, what you have in front of you, um, and if you recall, I think we talked about it a couple of times. We talked about it during budget season, um, the issues that we were facing with this LED conversion and the street light purchase. Um, and I had told you that once we got the national grid rebate and we got closer to fiscal year N18, we would see what we could do in terms of mitigating the shortfalls. So, um, Attached to my cover letter is an analysis of where we stood for the electric shortage. So at the, at the very top of that page, we came in short, including the street light account, mm -hmm. at $43,539. Um, primarily, the street lights uh, resulted from the budget that was in place for fiscal year 18 was assuming that we would start the conversion would be all done and everything would be up and running July 1. Well, that's not what happened. As a matter of fact, we're still converting some of the um, uh, street lights that PRISM has had some problems with, but I think they're 95 percent complete. So that that is really the. Um, uh, the issue with that shortfall. We are seeing some significant savings now that we are 95% converted with the street light account. Um, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed with that one. The other shortages in the electric accounts resulted primarily from when they did the LED conversion in each one of the buildings. There was a upfront cost involved with that. And that cost was spread over 48 to 60 months and if you look in the middle part of this analysis you'll see which building and how many months it was spread over was added to their regular electric bill their regular monthly electric bill and that was not budgeted for because when this was all presented um, by I forget who Matt Matt right but the the other company um, it was supposed to be a net zero. Mm -hmm. You know, the savings were going to offset these costs. That has not occurred. National Grid has said that they would look into it. We provided them with all kinds of data of our usage over the last, like, two or three years and haven't really gotten any response from them. So if you um, think about it, it wasn't budgeted for 18. It really wasn't budgeted for 19. I included what the, the budget for each one of those accounts is for 19. And if you compare that to the actual, we're going to be short again next year. Mm -hmm. And it's primarily <laughs> the result of these finance charges. So we had discussed taking what we had received from National Grid, the rebate. Um, we had to 
pay the town back for the initial purchase of the streetlights. There was some police details that the town had to um, provide. That was all part of the agreement. Um, so we, if you look at the lower part, entitled Potential Solution, we got $68,000 from National Grid. Um, I needed about 47000 of that to pay us back. So that leaves me with $20,000. We have an estimated $55,000 um, LED financing balance. If I just look at the costs that we put into the buildings, <coughs> that has been spread over the next four or five years and captured that, it's roughly $55,000. So after I went through the 18 numbers, I was recommending that the, um, the unexpended funds in some of these insurance accounts be used to pay off the purchase of the LED conversion so that we can pay it off and not be short next year, mm -hmm. basically because we're going to find ourselves in the same position next year with the electric accounts. Madam the President. The recommendation is, well, it says page one. On the first page at the very bottom. Oh, yeah, the request for bias transfer. That was my, so, po my potential mm -hmm. solution. So do you, do you need the total 56? I need the total. the 20 left over from the I'm national gonna use grid rebate? Well, we need 76,000. Oh, okay. So I'm going to use the 20 that's left over. Okay. And then I needed another 56. So all the total on this back page reaches your that, No. That's no. separate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Madam President, I have a question for the Treasurer. Sure. Um, so you had mentioned that you'd reached out to National Grid, and they've mm -hmm. thus far been unresponsive. Well, they haven't been unresponsive. Jan and I have been kind of in an email chain, but. They haven't been, you know, they're not all over it, like. Okay. Well, well, I mean, hypothetically speaking, if we make these transfers and we offset this stuff, is there a chance that they come back and suddenly find another solution and now we've got to make transfers going back the other way? I don't think so. I mean, okay. we purchased these um, products and paid for the labor for the installation, so I, I highly doubt it. Okay. I mean, they, they, are, they took the total cost by building and spread it out between four to um, 48 to 60 months. Yeah, the on-bill financing. Yep. Right, and zero interest. Yeah, that's right. important. What's, right. Okay. So the transfers would be what's on the bottom here? So the, yeah, it would be here. Okay. So those would be the transfers. Yeah. Okay. So the transfers that, that are attached here, we had also talked about these months ago mm -hmm. that I was going to try to find within the department unexpended funds to cover the electric shortages in each department. Okay. So if you go back to the first page at the top, you'll see town hall, fire department, police, DPW, senior center, and the streetlight accounts. We had shortages in every single one of them. Yep. Okay, so, so, the, so the back page matches up to the top. Yes. And the bottom page matches up to the middle. Right. Yes. Okay. Madam President. I want to make a motion if, uh, if there's going to be discussion. I'll hold off. I, I, I just want to ask. So the, the, on this LED conversion, the electric savings. That we are seeing some savings. And I did do an analysis of the kilowatt hours being used, and you do see a decrease in the cost, but it was not enough to offset the finance charges. It was supposed to be. I, I know. Yep. I may be wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, the timing has a lot to do with it as to when these projects were actually implemented and completed, which was a lot later than what originally. So therefore, the impact within the last fiscal year was a lot more than we had anticipated. That was the street lights, right? That was primarily the street lights, but Jan is correct. The LED conversion took a little bit of time, and then they weren't going to do the last two fire stations, mm -hmm. so they didn't start doing them until later in the year. So, you know, 
that affect it all? That affected it as well. Okay. Essentially, you're banking on 10 months of savings and you wound up with two. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right. So at, at the end of the day, we pay all these bills off. And in the next five to 10 years, that's where now real savings are going to come into effect. So we just need to pay them now. Yep. Again, let's not look at 10 minutes from now. Let's look at <coughs> five, 10 years from now. Right. And now the electric bill in the town will be significantly lower than it was before this project was implemented. So we're looking at, you know, there's a couple errors here and there, but they will make up for themselves over the next five to 10 years. So. Hopefully 60 months would be the max. Yeah. Well, wait, I mean, I'm just throwing yeah, a, no, a longer know. number out there. <laughs> right. So it's not like this money's wasted, like we've made a big error here, because we didn't. No. It was a great thing to do, to energy savings, and there's a few little glitches, but They it always happens. said they couldn't guarantee this, the amount of savings, but we thought it would be, I, I thought it would have been more. Well, with National Grid's looking for a hike right now, too, so again, this is going to be, look like a shining star when that happens, too, because the bill's going to be... You know, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pay up, and that's just the way it goes. Ready for me? No. Oh, anybody else? Go ahead. All right, Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to transfer uh, sixteen thousand five hundred dollars from account twenty one ninety fifty two sixty eight, twenty nine thousand one hundred and fifty dollars from account twenty one ninety fifty two sixty nine, forty two forty from account twenty one ninety fifty two seventy. And sixty-five hundred dollars from account twenty-one ninety fifty two seventy-one to account. What is the number? That's gonna go. I'm gonna have to transfer. I'm I'm actually gonna take that money mm -hmm. and send it to National Grid to pay off the financing. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna transfer it to account. We're just gonna approve the tr the, the oh, expenditure. Right. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the aforementioned um, accounts expended to uh, offset the uh, bill from National Grid. And I already spoke to them, and there's no prepayment penalties second. or anything like that. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Madam President. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to make a motion to approve all of the transfers listed um, from, you want me to run through each one of them? No. Uh, all of the uh, all the transfers as listed in the uh, amount of forty three thousand five hundred and thirty nine dollars and twenty cents uh, to accounts uh, ten forty sixty nine twelve electric uh, zero nine eight zero eighty seven ninety five streetlight conversion and thirty three eighty sixty seven forty five streetlights expense. Second. Second. The, uh, the total on that forty three what? Forty. It's forty three thousand. Five hundred and thirty-nine dollars and twenty cents. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Did you have anything you else said. with the other transfers that were included with the reports? It's too late for that. We already approved them. Well, those are just the ones we do every year for the cleanup. Yeah, we okay. approved them. It's probably the easiest year you ever saw that happen. <laughs> well, there's only one page. Last year, there was six pages. I know. I know. New business. Francis F. Provost, approval of proclamations for town of Tiverton to be a sanctuary town. Welcome, Mr. Provost. Thank you. I assume you all got the paperwork I left. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just say it again. The nature of my request is to make a statement that we, Tibbet, Rhode Island, will not assist the federal government in any of their actions relative to immigrants. The federal government, in my view, has overstated its bounds relative to the handling of the immigrant situation. These immigrant policies go against our core values as a nation. We are a country of immigrants, and as such, we should treat all immigrants fairly and as we hope our ancestors were treated. Could you just speak into the microphone a little bit? Because sure. I don't know if the camera's catching this. How's that? Good. Start again or go on? You can go on. Thanks. This, as citizens, is our right and duty. I've attached a cover letter, which I will also read, and I've also attached an ordinance from the, for all Rhode Island cities and towns to do this. The cities and towns that have done it are the state, Providence, in Jamestown. And I 
guess you really want to know why I'm here. I watched this a long time. Unsatisfactory to my book, but who am I? And then they jumped up there and separated mothers from their kids. Here I am. You can't do that. That's, that's against all moral judgment. Anybody who did that is against me, and I'm against them. And I'm done. Any questions? Any questions from the council right now? Madam President, yes. what, about anything? About the whole thing? Yeah, about the whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so you said Rhode Island approved this? Yes. And so did Jamestown? Yes, so did Providence. Pro Providence, yeah. Um, why, do, why do you want Tiverton to do it if isn't the state covering? That the the state That's is covering. Thing. I've heard that question before. Well, it's it sounds like the the state is approving. I think we need every voice. Okay. And we're a town, just like Jamestown, uh, Providence. And if we back up the state, that's a good thing. We're also unique in the fact that we are Tiverton. So but you're not doing anything different in Tiverton than what Rhode Island has done, correct? I'm not. I don't know what. I don't know what the town, uh, Tiverton, uh, excuse me, what the state did exactly. Okay. But I want to add our weight to it. Okay. And throughout the country, there are tons and tons of small cities and towns doing this. Right. And they're adding to their state's weight. So I think we should add it to our state's weight. Okay. All right, and I guess the other thing is, are you part of an organization, or are you doing it on your own? Just a little friendly Provo, all by himself. Well, but Providence has done has done this. So, are you did were you doing? Were you took? Did you take any part of the Providence? I just said no. To. I didn't take. I, I woke up one morning, you know, somewhere before August fifteenth. Yeah. And said, I'm going to come and see you folks. Okay. I did a little research. Mm -hmm. Find out what was what, but I don't belong. I don't belong. Uh, that's not true. I belong to one organization. That's it. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Prevost right now? Uh, Mr. McLaughlin, you did make a request, so just come to the microphone, introduce yourself. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The case of you people lost your mind. I need your name and your address. I'm William McLaughlin, 1640 Fish Road. Thank you. Now can I go? Now you can go. Right. You people must be losing your minds considering uh, this proposal to be a sanctuary town. First off, we have a legal process for immigration into this country, and, and that's the way they should do it because they learn what's expected of them to become citizens. Yet people like this gentleman here want to encourage people who have already shown they have no respect for our country or our laws by entering illegally. And we're going to encourage this. And, and you think they're going to follow the rest of our laws somehow after we uh, rewarded them for breaking them in the first place. Uh, not to mention the liability of the taxpayers. You get 75 illegal immigrants moving to this town and 20 of them are kids. We have to put their kids through school. That's $280,000 of burden on the taxpayers for people who are not going to contribute a dime in taxes because they're probably going to rent when they live here. So I don't see how that benefits us uh, in the town of Tiverton becoming a sanctuary city at all. Uh, not to mention that declaring a sanctuary city is defying federal law and it ties the chief's hands on things he can do to people who claim to be immigrants if they're arrested. Uh, not to mention the U.S. Uh, District Attorney is they're after the United States government's got California in the Supreme Court right now. And if they're found guilty of breaking federal immigration law by declaring a sanctuary state, we would be found in violation of federal law. I, I don't see how as a town we can defy federal law and feel good about it. I'm an American citizen. I'm a veteran. I believe in this country. I believe in the laws that were passed and we should stand by them, not go around them for people who are not going to benefit us. I'd just like to make something clear. No one has lost their mind up here in this council. A private citizen asked me to put this on the agenda, and I put it on the agenda. He has the right to speak his mind, and we have the right to choose what we would like to do. But um, I very seldom will take anyone, any private citizen's request and, and say no to it. So 
I have not oh, I lost didn't say my no. mind. He absolutely has the right to be heard, but to All consider right. but, it is But I just wanted to insanity. make it clear that by no means does this mean the council's considering it. It just means a private citizen has asked me to put it on the agenda, and I have not lost my mind. So thank you. We'll see. Okay. Anyone else? Hello, uh, Jeffrey Belli, 2 Birch Street. I would just like to just set the record straight. Um, the, the gentleman did bring up some things, recent events that has happened, children being separated from their families. Those laws that separated their children from their families, I don't know, do you know who passed those laws and wrote them into law? Are they laws? Yes, they are. The law that was passed, the law that was passed, that separated those children that the current administration has followed was passed and passed by Congress and was signed by President William Jefferson Clinton. That's who, who signed that right, into law. Jeff, Jeff, this is a Democrat Republican fight right now. Okay, just no, I'm just, I'm just letting him know if that, okay. if that is his, one of his things. The other thing I would also like to point out, you know, with what the other gentleman said, okay, Making a declaration such as becoming a sanctuary town or a sanctuary city is in violation of federal law. And I don't know if anybody else here on the council has been following the recent news. I would like this council not to forget the girl who just died because of an illegal immigrant. All right, thank you. She was murdered by an illegal immigrant, and right. he is awaiting trial. Okay. Do not forget Molly Tibbetts. Thank you, Jeff. So I think what I am going to suggest, um, I think what I'm going to suggest, and then if anybody further wants to talk, I think um, Tony needs to review this and tell us how lawful this is. I also think that Chief Jones needs to review this and tell us the consequences of what this would bring on to Tiverton, and also tell us like how many people here in Tiverton right now it would affect, um, because I'm sure we do have some idea. And I think we should refer this to the police chief and the count, uh, and our attorney, and table it for further meeting. Um, I'd like to entertain that motion. Madam I'll President. Make that motion. Oh, I, uh, I would like I'll to make, make well, you're gonna do one motion at a time? Yeah, let's, let's do okay. this motion here okay. in a second, and then I'll have a discussion, okay? Okay. All right, so, I'll, unless you want Council Bob to make his motion first. It, I mean, it has, I have no preference, but I would just echo that, um, or my motion would be, the exact, the exact steps that you outlined, refer to the chief of police, refer to the solicitor, um, and table for uh, a date not yet determined. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Well, I would like this whole thing put to bed right now tonight. I want to make a motion to make a vote that we absolutely deny his request to have Tivit in a sanctuary town. Um, and that's going to be my motion to... Absolutely not have Tivit in a sanctuary town. Do I have a second to Randy's motion? I don't think you can have two yeah. motions. I on can the have yeah. two motions yeah. and then yeah. I do this. On just got to vote on the first one, and then if this motion fails, then drop down to Randy's motion. But don't I have to have a second on that motion to even make it a motion? I think, I think so. I think Joe. I second it. No. John's, motion. John's motion is second. Yeah. So you want me to hold off on Randy's motion Correct. completely? Yes. Okay. Because we're in the discussion phase, or the phase online, right? Right. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I have a motion and a second on John's motion to table this for this evening, refer this to the solicitor and the police chief to um, really to get the ramifications of this and to see if legally this can be done. Um, can we abbreviate that and call it hold for further study? Sure. <laughs> hold for further study, refer, but making sure that we've referred it to the police chief and, and the attorney. Motion has been made and second. Any further discussion? All the, Joe? Um, just I, I want to say, say some things right now before the vote. Um, I have to agree that the, we, when we take office, we swear to uphold the U.S. Constitution. And the U.S. Constitution makes it perfectly clear that immigration is a federal responsibility. It is not a responsibility for a town. Um, we swear to uphold the Constitution, and I think... Um, we also have, as part of our charter, that we will not interfere with the performance of the police chief's duties, and I consider this his duty to uh, uphold, as he is also sworn to uphold the laws of uh, the U.S. Constitution. 
So I just want to make those two points, as well as um, if there is any further action on this, and it is approved, it would potentially put the town of Tiverton in a litigation situation. And that's an expense to the town, and I would prefer not to even entertain any expense to the town. And, and I agree with that. That's why I asked Tony to review it. If Tony comes back and says this is not something that we should do, that's why I felt it needs to be, be, be referred to Tony. I'm not sure that he's looked over this completely. Um, but that's, that's why I said that. Um, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, Tricia? Um, uh, I, I, I am curious to the solicitor's opinion because like Joan, you know, I'd prefer not to put the town in any position of liability. I, I'd also be curious to hear from the police chief whether or not, you know, this is a current issue in Tiverton. I, I don't know if it is or if it isn't. And, you know, in addition to the potential costs of litigation, there are also inherent costs in having a program like this. You then are required, once you become a sanctuary city or town, you're required to provide translation services, mm -hmm. you're provided to provide, uh, you know, English as a second language support, you're required to have written policies and procedures um, that are adopted. So, you know, it, it, it's not something that simply uh, you know, sounds nice on a piece of paper, and I'm, you know, many of us were hor completely horrified um, by the separation of very small children from their parents, um, but I, I'm not sure whether or not uh, th this is becoming as, and I truly don't know, whether or not becoming a sanctuary city or sanctuary town is the solution to that problem and whether or not that problem really can only be solved at the federal level. Because but of because of all these issues that have been raised, I'd like the opportunity to review this with Chief Jones and give you a, a definitive on, on these these all of these issues. All right, so I have a motion on the floor. Madam President. And I have a second and I have for the discussion. One more thing. Um, everybody keeps speaking of separating children from their families. Yeah. Well, let me when there's a crime committed in Rhode Island, I don't care what the crime is, and you get thrown in jail, you know, what? Cool. you know what? The kids don't go with you. So why should they have their kids with them and they're crossing the border doing everything illegal? So you rob a bank in this town and you have kids, they don't come to prison with you. I point. can guarantee you that because I'm there. You're talking to me now, right? No, I'm talking to them. Oh, well, then why are you I'm just looking at you. Because huh? you're, you're sitting there and, and that's right my focus is over there. Right, well, <laughs> so said, don't talk to me or let me answer your question. Uh, just I, hold up. This, this okay. is discussion. No, this is just the discussion yeah. among the council. Well, he was looking at me. I thought he and wanted to. And I'd like to make this brief. All okay. right, all right, I'm done. So that, I'm no, just no, letting no, you know. No, well, I don't want to cut you off. But when there's a crime committed, the kids don't go to prison with the parents. I can guarantee you that. All right, so. <laughs> all right, you so. Are you talking to again? I, I, please. Talking to? He's then. talking to me. He's, okay. He's, he's looking at me. Yeah, well. We're all looking this direction because we're all facing this direction. Okay, so I have a motion on the floor and second. All those in favor? Against, 5-2. Motion passes. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Will I hear the summary of the chief and the lawyer? Will I be it notified? will be put on um, an agenda item when they're prepared. So and probably, you got a guesstimate how long? Probably in September, maybe the last week in September, the last meeting in September. We're going to give them a month. Okay, thank you very okay. much. I think we said indefinitely. Well, we'll talk about that. Right. Jan January I just just put it to Yeah, we could. Thanks. Um, you're welcome. I'd like to entertain a motion to bring G7 forward. Mr. Pe uh, Pelletier has come to speak to us, and he had other meetings before. So moved. That's why I put him at the end. So moved. Do I have second. a second? Motion's been made and second. All those in favor? Brett Pelletier, update on progress of Stone Bridge Abutment Project. Hi, Brett. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Just state your name and address, even though. Uh, my name is Brett Nicholas Pelletier. I live at 34 Evans Avenue, just down the street. Um, we just wanted a, um, a, a lot of counselors just wanted to know what was going on with this project up to this point. Sure. Uh, we're on schedule. We're on, well, the schedule, we're on schedule. Um, the schedule was, was much longer than was necessary to complete the project in all 
uh, estimation. So but we're on schedule, we're on budget. Uh, aside from some change orders and some minor hiccups and coordination with the, um, with the Grinnell's Beach Committee, everything's moving on perfectly adequately, I suppose. And uh, when do you think the completion date will be? Approximate. <laughs> I don't know yet. It okay. depends on a number of things. There's some long lead items that have been causing some problems for us, some concrete stonework that takes quite a long time to make. And um, Where's Rick? It's over there. Um, I mean, we've talked to the engineers about it. We'd like to get it done by the end of September, but I'm not sure if that's possible. Okay. They have until if, the end of the if year. If you'd like to come up, that's, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so they have until the end of the year for the contract, uh, but right. obviously they don't want to be working in December right. um, and November. So we're, the last time we met, I think, Jan, w we tried to get a hard date out of them, and they kind of wiggled a little bit and said, you know, we'd like to say we get it, to, get it by the end of September, but, you know, I'm not sure. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, to echo what Brett said, they expect the gravel, the compaction, the paving. They ex expect that and the grading uh, in between that to be done. Uh, the drainage. They expect the lighting uh, pedestals to be in. The lights themselves, maybe, maybe not, but that's all above the ground. Uh, all the fine tuning and all the electric hookups and wiring, maybe not. The, but they expect the pedestal to be in also. Uh, in the loam and seed by the end of September, as Brett said. But some of the, the cleanup, that kind of thing, may not be done by the end of September. The, the, structure, the, the major structural bits are done. I mean, the, the, the yes, sheet pile's in, the cap's in, the, the north wall is substantially completed with the exception of the finishing uh, caps. Uh, the south wall is substantial is, is complete uh, the sur surface is substantially complete they I mean I got a backfill report so I imagine they've backfilled uh, the drainage and what all that and um, it's really throwing asphalt and the top coat on the railing on north and south sides the lighting hand uh, the lighting holes and uh, fixtures and then the paving of the parking lot and all the, the bollard installation and little things I mean, we've coordinated with um, Trisha's committee to get the south side curbing done this week so we can pave the rest of the parking lot. For the most part, it's good. got very little substantive work to do. Madam President? No. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, Mr. Pelletier, how are we doing money-wise? Because I know if we go over the amount of money we receive from the federal government then through the state, the town holds the bag, and mm. I just want to make sure that we don't have that happen. Yeah, Arakio knows. We've stressed that a number of times, effectively, that if they go over budget, they're not going to get paid. So they, um, not so much that, but that, w that we, we don't have a, uh, deep pockets to, to reach into. So they're very sensitive to that. Um, they were tracking, I think, 80% completion on the budget side of a million eight, um, but that's exclusive of any change orders, and we've got a change order for the parking lot and some reconciliation on final um, uh, quantities uh, at the end of the project that we, you know, 50,000 maybe? 57. 57,000 we're thinking. So we're well within our contingency. Would it be possible to get, a, a, a get the actual numbers on a, on a report at some point? I mean, I know we're kind of close to the end, but. What actual numbers? Like as far as the uh, budget expenditures, all that stuff? Yeah, the so, so the most recent report came in a couple, uh, maybe a week ago or so, and at, so we're at 81.7% uh, of budget of 1.8 million, which was the con original contract price, and then the 57,000 is what Bill Anderson estimated our, our reconciliation on the quantities would be, and then is it 60,000 or 70,000 on the parking lot, Jan? I can't remember. I think we've got that. I'm, I don't know I'm, if we've signed anything yet with them, but I mean, we we don't have to dive into it now. I mean, if Jan's got all the, yeah, if, if the, yeah. Uh, maybe the administrator could yeah. just send it out to the council, that'd be yep. great. As far as I know, everything is within the budget as well as the estimates that Bill Anderson had developed for the different remaining elements so far. Uh, the other thing is I've spoken with uh, DOT Tom Queenan, who's sort of the top overseer of this about the. 
uh, change orders uh, that still need to be processed so they actually are within uh, the project and eligible for uh, reimbursement. That looks like it's going well. Uh, Tom is going to do everything he can to uh, to help us with that. So, and if, if I mean, if on the back of a envelope, so to speak, if you take the million eight base contract price, add seventy thousand for the parking lot, add sixty thousand for quantity adjustments, um, even if you add a fifteen or twenty percent contingency on top of that, we're still under the two three million two three cap. So, um, and we've held back purchasing. Um, the lighting fixtures themselves, which was $180,000, give or take, um, in case we ran into problems. And so far, we haven't. So. Any other We've run into issues, but nothing substantial. <laughs> Any other questions from the council? Madam President. Yes. With, with the lighting, um, the stanchions will be there, just the poles won't be, correct? Like you just said, you well, have well, we have that decision to make. We, we, our, our initial plan was we'd put all the infrastructure in place and then at the end of the project, we'd drag our feet as long as we could to say, do we have enough money? As long as we didn't have, because there were some issues we didn't know, because we didn't have enough borings on the west and uh, the northwest side. If we were to run into any issues with driving the sheet piles that we had to, to work around, we didn't. Uh, there were a couple of other areas where we were concerned that we would run into additional costs. We didn't. Uh, so I theoretically, we'll wait until we the last minute, but then we'll try to squeeze in the, the fixtures as well so and the, so, the wiring. So the 180 will be the bases and the fixtures? Um, I don't remember how exactly the, the that was an add alternate, and I want to say that 180 included the bases, the fixtures, the wiring, and the podium, because we had to, they, VHB kind of <coughs> made that, uh, change um, uh, independently and we needed the podium whether we had the lights in, in or not because it was going to feed the the um, the beach project as well so I think we bill had to carve that out so it's probably closer to 150,000 for all of the lighting infrastructure and also we had uh, the option the potential option to source it locally um, with some um, residents who were in the business that could potentially help us out if if worse came to worse any other questions for the council just uh one one comment um we did have some feedback in one of our meetings about the lighting so that it was downward mm -hmm. instead of skyward and and maybe not so much lighting mm -hmm. so just want so to the, pass that along the light the lights will be um their led um, down lighting that um, they're controllable and dimmable and so there are two there's a timer uh, control and then there's a, a, a manual override so we can set it to light w where we want and we had a, um, a photometric plan done when we had the whole site designed and the light spill was very minimal because they are concentrated heads very good. I'm sure that the, the residents who came yeah. forward would be, will be very happy. Yeah, I, I mean, early on in the process, we had a, a resident who, who called me, and um, it was already past the, we had already gone to bid on the, the packet, but um, we were trying to get as close to dark sky compliant as we could. So Excellent. Excellent. We're Thank doing you. the best we can on that. Yeah. Any other questions? Brett, thank you, and thank you very Certainly. much for taking over this, yeah. this project and helping much. Jan yes, in, the, in the absence <laughs> of a DPW director. And, and, and quite frankly, um, I'm sure you've helped Mr. Rogers oh, immensely. I, I, yeah, well, this is, I've done very little. Between yeah. Jan, Rick, the <laughs> treasurer, <laughs> no, the treasurer and, and, and everybody else that's been working on this project, um, we've, it's all been, and, and our, our on-site staff is good as well. Thilsch Engineering has been very helpful. Well, I can still give you my appreciation and thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and feel free to call or email anytime. I will. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> Chief Jones, permission to advertise for eligibility list of part-time, full-time dispatches. Good evening again. Good evening. 
so the current list of dispatch staff that we have, which we try and keep a list at least good for a year, is exhausted. Um, we hired one casual, actually two casual CCOs, one resigned, um, and one is currently working. I also want to have a list just in the case we have a potential for any other full-time employees so there can be a smoother transition. We have a young woman who has taken the place of a uh, dispatcher who recently retired. She's going to take over his shift, which is perfect for us, so it'll limit the overtime. But as of right now, I have no qualified applicants. So I'd just like permission to advertise to create a list. Madam President, yes. uh, motion to grant Chief Jones permission to advertise for eligibility list of part-time slash full-time dispatchers. Second. Any further discussion? Motion been made and second. All those in favor? Stay right where you are. Chief Jones, permission to advertise for part-time animal control officer. So what I would like to do going forward, as you know, your animal control officer uh, works Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. He's a unionized employee. His hours are set by the contract. Um, I would like to, under the same kind of umbrella of having a casual CCO, and I've spoken to the AFSCME union president about this, which they have no problem with, um, as long as we stay under the 19-hour cap, this person would be a non-permanent, non-union um, employee. Uh, they would receive no benefits other than working and the salary that they would receive. And as far as a benefit to the town, obviously, especially with coming into the season with everyone going back to school and everyone utilizing our town fields, we had a lot of complaints on the weekend for animal services. We also have the new shelter, which is located at West Place. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job, but they want to keep that collaboration between the police department going. Every time we have an animal complaint on off hours on the weekend, a police officer is committed to taking care of that. So what I'm trying to do in connection with the resources that we're allocating throughout the town with the opening of the casino, by having a part-time person that only works the weekend eight hours a day, that'll just take one added responsibility off the police. Madam President, uh, motion to grant Chief Jones permission to advertise for part-time animal control officer. Second. Any further discussion? Madam President. Yes. Go ahead. I'm um, just going to go down the, yep. okay. I the, uh, the animal control officer, now a full timer, is he an armed person? No, he's not. He's not armed anymore. He is not. They used to be, correct? That is correct. So it's no more. That is correct. And I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard stories about that. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that we, we'd have a part time guy who gunslinging and shooting nope. the pet raccoons and stuff. No. The last <laughs> on animal control, <laughs> the last, uh, the animal control officer has access to a tranquilizer gun but no, uh, not and carrying it, of any firearms. And in the that. case there's a rabbit um, animal, I've had this happen in my neighborhood, they call the police officers. And we dispatch a police with them, shot. correct. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Right. okay, so um, so this person is only going to be on Saturday and Sundays? That is correct. But you mentioned that there's off-duty and on, on days, um, Days off, sorry. Correct. So is that when a regular policeman takes over for the, Correct. or you just? So like after hours right now, if yeah. there was a call for an yeah. animal, a police okay. officer would respond. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to make sure that he could, he can't go on, the, the person who's on the weekend can't go and take off some of the off, that days off. But that's okay because it's covered. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Hilton, so um, Chief Jones, do you have an um, estimated budget for this or? place in the budget your budget for this what I plan on doing right now if we call the animal control officer out off duty it's overtime okay so with my current staffing and the current budget that I have allocated yes also what I can do given that it's an at-will employee like during the summertime I can't foresee having someone come in on a January weekend that it's six inches of snow on the ground so that person won't be called in so during certain parts of the year, definitely now getting into the use of the fields for the athletics and kids going back to school and possibly in the spring and the summertime. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Council of vote. Discussion and possible vote for casino revenue audit. So um, I've been speaking to Tony about getting these ordinances up and running before election time comes around. Um, and I talked to Tony before we came in today, and it needs a little more work before we can actually um, discuss what's going on, unless you want to bring up to date where we're at with the council right now, unless you want to wait until... I want to just table it until... I, I, I would. I, 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 this is something I really need to work with the uh, 
town administrator on, and I got him a, a skeleton ordinance a little bit late, but he pointed out that I missed a couple of vertebrae, maybe a femur, <laughs> and he's raised good issues, and, and we're working on it. I, I, I think that uh, Yana's good perspective, and I want to continue on with him so we can get something in, intelligent out to you. All right, so I'll something? check with you in the, sept the first we, September meeting to see if you're good. Can we get what you got so far? Uh, Any chance of it? You want to wait till it's finished? Wait till it's finished. Wait. 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 The, uh, the town is... <laughs> 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 I prefer a whole call. That's why he makes the big bucks. Yes. We'll go with that. Council Hilton? Do you want to ask a question? We're just we're moving on, right? No motion needed. No motion needed. Beautiful. Okay. Um, the next one is mine. Council President De Medeiros requests update on casino opening and preparation. As you all know, the casino is opening September first. I just noticed the sign there, and I'm not sure if any if that just went up, but it's a really nice sign. I noticed it today. Um, and I just need an update on whether we are prepared with um, the police and the fire. Um, and is there any potential problems? Okay. Um, I thought I might start with uh, the fact that the completion of the roundabout was one condition before they can actually open. And we had some concerns that it was taking a lot of time to actually get that completion. Uh, we now, I believe, have the roundabout striped and uh, being cleaned up, or maybe that's all done really by good. now. So they actually have achieved substantial completion, which is really what's needed to allow the opening to uh, continue. Uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock is the ribbon cutting at the roundabout. Um, on Thursday, we'll have the initial soft opening. <coughs> at 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. And, and the soft opening continues for two days, and then on Saturday is the um, public opening. Um, in terms of being ready, uh, the police department in particular is uh, fully ready to supply the details that are needed. Um, we've had quite a few complications with the fire uh, department just because there were some um, issues that were not sufficiently anticipated that we needed to work on together with both Labor Council and the town solicitor. So we're in the process of that for the time being. We have uh, essentially a fallback option in place, which is very limited to one detail for any shift and that detail to be filled by um, town firefighters. In the meantime, we are working on uh, a solution that can overcome some of the legal issues so that maybe as needed, uh, we can bring on additional people, uh, which I expect will be needed, but we'll have further discussion about that. Um, now, he brought up the ribbon cutting tomorrow at 10. I was originally going to go to this when it was last week. I do have a doctor's appointment. Um, I know John will definitely make the Thursday ribbon cutting. Are you able to make Wednesday? I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that. Well, because they wanted some kind of speech about the roundabout, which I wasn't quite sure what I say about a roundabout. <laughs> I'm going I'm to give, give you a preview of my speech if I were to give one. Well, I think we should thank it's, everyone. It's circular. <laughs> No, I think we should thank everyone concerned for getting a completion, but I also think we should thank all the residents in that area for putting up with what they put up with in the last um, couple of months. Because, and as one resident who saw it and lived through it, it, it was a hardship. But um, I don't know how everyone feels, but it is getting much, much better as far as I'm concerned. And I go there all different times of um, the day, but I do want to. I realize what a hardship this was on everybody concerned, and um, thank you everyone for their patience, and I think we probably need to express that tomorrow, whoever's going to say that speech, and I don't mean to... Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately it will not be me. Okay. Um, at work conflicts. I, I can't. I know Joe can, but he's not thrilled about saying the speech, but I just gave the speech for you. Oh. Thank you, and by the way, tell him, <laughs> tell, him it's, tell him it's round, and you go around it. Yeah, I got something that I'm going to try. Is it at 10 tomorrow or it's 11? It's at 10. It's at 10, 10 What about the ribbon cutting on Thursday? What time is that one? 10 also? 10. Yeah. And John's prepared I'll, to make I'll the speech for be that. prepared for that one. But I think, I, I think what we need to really stress is that, that this was, we stressed with Twin Rivers and the state that we, and Joan was on that council, that this roundabout had to be in place when this happened. And 
um, even though maybe there is some tweaking, it is there, and um, I think the people feel that the traffic is doing better there, and I personally do. I'm just one resident that goes by there every day. So, are you going to be there? I, I will be there. Um, I just want to add one thing about the inspections and uh, items remaining for quite some time now. We were a little concerned that, um, again, they were behind on schedule, it looked like. Um, they have stepped up. Um, I will really want to give credit to our inspectors because they've been there all the time. They've been very accommodating to uh, the contractors. and. I just had an update from the interim building inspector that he does expect to issue another temporary uh, certificate of occupancy, which essentially allows them to open. The final certificate cannot be issued until the fire alarm test is done, which has to be done uh, after the official public opening. There are several outstanding items that they want to be very careful with. They actually get done, so there's a lot of pressure on the contract right now to finish that uh, tomorrow and the day after. But um, the building inspector was optimistic that it would all happen in time. I would also like to say that in light, at the time where all this was going on, we didn't have a DPW director, we didn't have a building official. Um, I think everyone has stepped up to the plate and um, I want to thank everyone and that's including the fire chief, the police chief, the building inspector. I understand that the fire marshal has played a significant role in this and I've been here in town where he is constantly in Jan's office with updates and I want to thank everyone involved because I know that this was a difficult time in light of the staffing that we had and everyone stepped up and did a really great job and then I, I think the rest of the council agrees with me. I do. Yes. Anything else? Any questions? I will be there on Thursday as well. You will. Okay. So. All right, good. You got my back if I start <laughs> to fall for Joe. Yes. And, yeah, and you'll be there. But, Joe, are you going to say something? Actually, or do you want to I will something? not be there on Thursday. No, but you'll be there on Wednesday. On Wednesday, yeah. So one of you will is it be Wednesday or Tuesday? Wednesday or Tuesday? It was so you Tuesday. said tomorrow. Now you're talking about Wednesday. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really screwed up. Is it Tomorrow's Wednesday? Tuesday. It's tomorrow. I, it was Wednesday originally, yes. Just so you know, I'll be there Saturday. Oh, <laughs> 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 the place will be closed on Sunday. If you would Sunday. like to say a speech, man, you go right ahead. Oh, no, my, my speech will be to the dealer. Hit me. <laughs> I'm, I, I apologize. This was supposed to be on a Wednesday, and it's still in my head as Wednesday. So it's tomorrow. So it's tomorrow at 10. And Joe, we, will you say I'll something? I'll do my best. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jan will back you up if you need it. And I've asked for shade. Okay. <laughs> well, they have a whole bunch of flowers. <laughs> All set up. I, I know. Don't get run over. Stuff. So I think that's where you'll be, and there's no shame. Look both ways. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's all. I just wanted to make sure that everyone, and especially the residents, had an update on what was going on, and it is going smoothly. All right. Town Administrator, request approval to advertise RFP for energy service. Thank you. Um, a little while ago, I mentioned that uh, there are opportunities to purchase additional renewable energy at uh, discount prices, and you were supportive uh, in principle. Um, actually, these are extra public oh, yeah, copies. Right I guess <coughs> um, but we, um, you, you directed me to make sure we do this in a competitive uh, manner. So uh, I received from the solicitor's office a draft RFQ, RFP that you have in front of you. My apologies for not getting that to you sooner. Um, it still needs more work, but it gives an idea of how uh, thorough uh, this request will be and what um, proponents will need to respond to on, on different items. Uh, I would like to advertise that as soon as possible um, and hopefully get back to you in, this, in this September uh, with a uh, initial outcome of the uh, request for proposals process. And Tony, you'll be reviewing this. Have you looked at this? He drafted this. He drafted Actually, we drafted, drafted oh, it, right. yes. And you'll be? Yes. Keeping track with what needs to be tweaked on it because Jan said it's not complete. Yes. Okay. Madam President? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to um, approve uh, the town administrator advertising the RFP for energy services pending his tweaks and approval of those tweaks by the solicitor. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any 
further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Bids and requests for proposal to the Hilton Grinnell's Beach Committee Award of bid for recycling station at Grinnell's Beach. Uh, thank that you. That would be this piece, the Max R, right? The Max R one. Um, we went out to bid for recycling stations to the beach. Uh, the bids closed on Friday at 2 o'clock. There was only one bidder, uh, Max R, so I'm requesting that the council award um, the bid for four HDPE recycling stations to Max R in the amount of $11,078.20. Because trash cans are really, really oh, expensive. expensive. Is that like just, is these like the, are these like the solar ones that compact? No, they're... They, they're, they're not the solar ones that compact. They're, uh, they're, they're big. They're uh, three 45-gallon units ganged together and made of HDPE, that high-density plastic stuff, um, with stainless hardware so it won't rust at the beach, cool. and veil tops and seagull flaps and everything else. Any idea what they weigh? Too much for um, you to pick up. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. These are um, th th these are big. They're well, like we'll be able to find them <laughs> no, they're big. They're like you know, they're heavy. They're heavy, heavy. They're like sixty inches long by forty inches high by you know twenty inches. Like these things are big, and they're heavy, and um, I want to guess they're several hundred pounds a piece. Okay, there's a lot of money in recycling. And, this, and yeah. this is in the budget, and we're, it's all set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Madam I, President. I mean, we knew that we were going to have to spend a, a, lot of money. a lot of money to have trash things. And frankly, we considered the, the, we considered the solar ones, and the thing that really scared us away the most was the fish in there. And, and if you start yeah, putting fish, fish guts, fry. and you mm -hmm. start putting fish guts, in a solar trash compactor, the stench will kill you. <laughs> and um, we, we just decided at the end of the day that that was probably going to smell too bad. And these are, you know, if somebody does that, they can be emptied out and they can be hosed out with a hose and it hopefully won't smell too bad. Madam President? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the award of $11,078.20 for recycling stations to Max R. Second. I have a motion, second. Question? Um, just a, a question. Um, we probably should make plans to do the same thing at Fogland. Yeah. At some point. At some point. And uh, when we have the trash bins out here, the green and blue ones, they came out of some type of it fund. It was a grant, wasn't it? it uh, was oh, no, no. I think recycling, recycling proceeds. Yeah, no, it, was, it, it, was a recy it went into the recycling committee, but it was a grant or some funds that we received for recycling. Am I right? It was something like that. Vaguely. Although we, we, we didn't... Um, we didn't consider using those, which we still, apparently the town still can get some of those. Yeah. We didn't consider them because they're metal. And, you know, in the salt environment down there, HDPE was the way to go so okay. that, you know, it, it wouldn't rust. But um, I, I think somebody at the DPW might know. Uh, it know might have been it might have been resource more. recovery. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. That's what it was. That refund from exactly. resource that's recovery, which I think went away, right? But I think we still have some money in that account. I don't think we spent that entire account, but we We're, do. We spent it? No, we still have money. No, we still got some. So it might be a good consideration to think of Fogland yeah, as and, well. And okay. use that money. To okay. be consistent between the beaches. Madam President? Yes. One more point of discussion, just on the agenda um, for future bids and requests when these come up. I would prefer, it, say, Councillor Hilton as opposed to Tricia Hilton. Just talk to Nancy. <laughs> just we want to we want to reflect her official title, Nancy. Come on. Well, I, 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 that's she actually I something. don't believe that that was Madam Clerk's fault. I think I was in a mad hurry. I filled up the form, and I sort of put it under my role as fine, chair fine, of the fine. Beach committee. But I'll 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 write both. We next know time who I she is. Stand correct. All right. So I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Town Administrator announces announcements. Uh, any council announcements? I know someone. Did. I do. Okay. 
Uh, Madam President, I was approached by a constituent um, this week, and uh, he wanted to make sure that um, I gave kudos to both the fire department and the police department. Apparently, they were uh, there was an issue that happened. He needed an ambulance to come, um, and they took incredibly good care of him. And so he wanted to make sure that you know I made that announcement publicly and thank them for uh, for their work and, and how they were able to uh, to take care of him. So, thank you. Thank you. I have two. Um, one is just a question because it's almost September now, and I'm getting a little worried that our, um, however we're going to sort out outdoor seating, isn't going to be ready for November, and I really don't want to ask the businesses to have to come back a second time. So I'm just wondering if we're making any progress. On that. Would you like to? Jan was going to put it on the agenda for this week, but it needed, it still needed a little work, so. Uh, I think our plan was to put it on the September one, and then we have to do the public. We, we need a little more work by the solicitor in consultation with me. Uh, there was an amended version of the ordinance. Uh, since that amendment, there hasn't been really any further amendments. And I think out of the public meetings or, or public hearings, there were some issues that perhaps we can uh, accommodate a little bit better uh, by looking at the language. So. Yeah, I'm supplying some additional uh, research to uh, Jan. He'll get that at the end of this week. It was going to be on this agenda, but after discussion, we decided that we would wait one more. I didn't think that would be any big deal. Uh, and, and I have one more one after okay. you. And, the, and then my second one, and I think everybody saw this, um, which has been put together by Open Space. Um, which, which is, is awesome. Which is just a fabulous piece of work of mm -hmm. all of the Open Space um, recreation areas in town with all maps of all the hiking trails and where are the places you can take your dogs and where you can where there's hunting and all and it's just really really nice so if you haven't picked one up you should and also hopefully we'll have it kudos to the open space commission for such a nice piece of work madam president yes I, I would just want to um, echo that but also there are a lot of different organizations it wasn't just open space although they took the lead but there are a lot of and it is I just think it's I know they've been talking about it for a long time and I just think it's great and where will people be able to get this well I'm hoping because we have the, those um, catalogs. we have them distributed they're on the tax tables they're at the oh, senior okay. center they're out here and in the public area they're on the clerk's counter and we will okay. get some up to the library All right. I think just I think it's great because I think Tiverton is so beautiful and it's like finally we we're showing it. That information um, thing outside of town hall, maybe we could put a couple in there because mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of walkers and hikers. On yeah. Look at it. Look at it. But we have been getting them around as best we can. There were 500 of them, so copies. They're going to go copies. fast. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to keep replenishing them. Yeah. So. Okay. When is done. Yeah. Okay. Oh, everyone down, down there? Yep. Down. All right, uh, so one other um, item of recognition. I had the uh, privilege to go to the landfill on Saturday, um, and I call it a privilege because I enjoy it. Uh, but uh, I noticed that they, they, opened, uh, they opened the new uh, access road, um, and I think we should recognize uh, Kim Litchfield uh, for all the hard work that he did. I know he was instrumental in putting that together, and it looks fantastic, despite the fact that it's at a landfill. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think that kudos goes out to, to Kim and, and uh, the rest of the DPW crew who were involved in uh, putting that together, because, quite frankly, the road looks better than the old road, which we're going to fill with trash, so. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Town solicitor? Town clerk? Just to let you know that um, I have been working with two of the attorneys from um, Attorney DeSisto's office, and we are making great headway on this code, and I am pushing them a little to do more of the zoning that we said would not be in this, but they're kind of incorporating Push where minutes. we can. And really, we're doing a great job. And, and that outdoor ordinance was also mentioned today. So I just want you to know it really is coming along. And Better than way, I've seen it. Tony has a new associate, associate that's really yes, helping. He does. So just so everyone knows, there is a new associate over at Tony's office that's work at. This might be your announcement. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, they tell me that. Uh, um, and Nancy uh, reminds them of Coach Belichick. The way she's driving <laughs> I need to get the most we can on this. And these are, this are one job. very young lawyers. 
both. Very enthusiastic. Very enthusiastic. Yes, they like are. We may end up liking them better than Tony, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll There's going to be three of them, though? Yes. Tony and two. Yeah, so it's going to be three. Yeah. Do we cheat them out? Is that what it's going to be called? Actually, uh, uh, there's two associates on it. I've also hired someone else, too, and, and we're starting them off down here in Tiverton for the experience. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're actually not Tony. You're Pierce Morris. Good place to put them. If they survive Tiverton, they'll survive anywhere. Absolutely. Okay. All right, anyone else? All right, I'm glad with Madam President, uh, I'd like to make a motion to go Can into. Wait a minute. Wow. Can I? Oh, I thought that's when I did it. No, it would be in the open forum. It's when you make <laughs> oh, the announcement. Oh, I was late. <laughs> I have this just this month. Okay, I have, I have three. Um, Kelly Levesque, Crandall Come Road. On. All right, three, quick. Part and Gray Day, reminder, is the 15th of September. Denise will be there selling 50-50 raffle tickets. I'll call you. She'll be there, don't um, worry. If anyone else would like to volunteer, just let me know. It's 10 to 4 on that Saturday. If Which it day? rains, um, Saturday, September 15th. And the rain date is Sunday. All are welcome to attend. There is a $5 fee for parking. Um, the second thing is the Tiverton Prevention Coalition had a site visit last week um, from a member of the um, staff um, overseeing our federal grant that we have. Um, Sally and I participated in the working lunch. He was here all day, um, and I got word today that they received highly commended. Uh, the gentleman was very impressed with almost everything that we had to talk about. So that was awesome. No, Sally did not eat. She had a cup of tea. Don't Come put on, her. Sally. Don't put her on the watch list. Um, and the third thing is, I'm a member of the building committee, uh, the construction committee at the high school and the middle school. Happy to report that they will be opening on time on Tuesday the 15th. On uh, Tuesday the 5th, um, and we are waiting. We will have a public open house uh, towards the end of October once we power on the boilers so that everyone can come and see all of the construction that has gone on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. Two, oh, sorry. Tuesday's the 4th for open day of school, first day of school. All right, John. All right, Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to go in a closed executive session, Town Administrator 4246-5A2, Collective Bargaining, IBPO, and IAFF. Second. Yes. 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 And continuing in closed executive session, Solicitor 4246-5A2, Potential Litigation. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.